Hey, so Herr Galt here, and I'm gonna walk you through harmonizing a chorus, show you how to make it sound incredible. Let's get to it. We're gonna dig in from a place that might be familiar. The song's basically done, but the lead vocal needs to feel even bigger, more lush. What it's begging for is harmony. So we're gonna start with this. I will follow. And transform it into this. You were lost, yet the overmind. And the place I'll often start is what does the harmony need to do emotionally? And the chorus at this moment feels sweet. Which is good, because in essence, this is a love song, but it's also a song that's rife with loss and pain. And ultimately, it's uncertain, saying, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I'm with you anyway. And so one way we can introduce a tinge of apprehension is to deploy something like an anticipation. Our harmony will come in on a note that's not in the currently sounding chord, but is in the upcoming one. Things will feel tense while the harmony note isn't in that first chord. Then when the chord change happens and the harmony note is in the chord, we'll get a sense of completion, making the tension feel like it got us somewhere. And the chords at this moment are a G flat major and a D flat major. So to make the anticipation work, we need a note that's in the second chord. It's not in the first. Rules out the D flat because it's common to both chords. And to decide which of the two remaining tones we should choose, let's think about their relationship to the first chord and how that might feel. The A flat is a ninth to the G flat major, which can feel a little hopeful. The F natural is a seventh, which will pull in a shade of melancholy. Perfect, let's use that. And this is how the anticipation will sound. We feel that momentary tension melt away into a feeling of completion. Now, the lyric we're harmonizing here is I will follow, but I wanna play on the pronunciation and have the harmony simply say, I will fall. And to musically mirror that, we'll use a falling motive in the melody too, which will give us something like this. I will fall. You might be wondering how those two new notes are chosen, apart from being descending. Well, they're anchored to the chords themselves, which gives us a nice feeling of balance after the tension of the anticipation. And speaking of balance, since both the lead and the harmony have a downward spiral at the end, I will follow. Let's add a third line, rising, contrary to both. I will fall. Let's put it all together. I will follow. And the combination of dissonance from the anticipation, satisfying balance from the counterpoint, and fullness from voicing three-part sonorities, gives us a really rich, lush sound. Okay, now it's important to note that at the subphrase level of the melody, we have a question and an answer. And it can be very effective to change the harmony type between moments like this. We make the melodic structure more apparent by creating contrast, drawing a line between the subphrases with the change in texture. And this variation also helps keep us from using the same harmonizing technique for too long a stretch, as unrelenting uniformity can start to feel fatiguing. So we did a thick three-part harmony for the first bit. Let's do a breezier two-part answer. And a perfect way to draw a very stark contrast from the dense harmony is to start right away on the unison. So this is our lead melody. So we'll start on the same F the melody does. And as it steps up, we'll step down. And this desirable contrary motion sets us up for a succession of thirds if we keep walking by step in the same direction. And now, at the moment where the lead melody leaps down, we're left with a choice. Get out of its way and respect the hierarchy of upper lead, lower harmony, or allow the voices to cross and in general, you'll want to be mindful about voice crossing, avoiding it if clarity of line is an imperative. But here, twisting the melodies around each other 
intertwining them like faded friends whose paths always seem to cross is as conceptually sound as it is musically delightful. Okay, to allow the melodies to cross, we need the harmony line to move up, and we can soften the potentially bewildering effect of the voice crossing if we move by step while the lead leaps, differentiating the two lines in this way. This also lands us on a second, a dissonance, which after a succession of thirds, we rather need. Now that the melodies feel wrapped around each other, as the lead does another leap down, let's have the harmony feel pulled down with it, settling it momentarily on the tonic by step, giving us this. Friend that I once knew. Perfect. By the way, if you want more on the principles that are guiding my hand here, or want to master harmony writing and singing in general, check out my lesson download, Harmony Workshop. It's on my website, link in the description. Okay, we've got one more new section to harmonize in the chorus. You were gone, you were gone, you were gone for so long. And since there's so much repetition in that phrase, instead of introducing a distinct counter melody and risking diverting the focus to a subordinate line, let's use a pedal tone. The pedal won't attract attention to itself, but we can still do something interesting with it. We'll shift the pedal tone at each repetition, giving us a sinking feeling like the bottoms falling out. You were gone, you were gone, you were gone for so long. We hear one statement against the tonic, then against the leading tone, then finally against the submedian. This is a technique that works really well against repeated phrases, because where our brain might habituate to the part that's repeating, as the pedal shifts, the repetition gets cast in a new light revealing distinct facets to the same musical idea. Okay, we just came from the section with two parts. So let's add another line and return to a three-part texture. And this is a perfect opportunity for a trick I often use, which is write a counterline for the counterline. There's a kind of organic quality that emerges when working in serial iterations like that. A line based on a line based on a line. It's like musical evolution. So let's put that pedal under the microscope and treat it like it's our lead. You were gone, you were gone, you were gone for so long. My ear is begging for an escape tone embellished counterline. Escape tones start on a chord tone, step into a dissonance, and resolve by leap in the opposite direction. You were gone, you were gone, you were gone for so long. With this, we're able to retain the descending pedal idea, but now with a little bit more intricacy and detail. And when we return the lead, something interesting happens. You were gone, you were gone, you were gone for so long. There's a complex, dense sensation of texture. It's really satisfying. That's because this is full of dissonance. In fact, if we just play the lead and the second harmony line together, it gets pretty crunchy. but that's missing the intermediate line, which makes all of the difference. It's what gives the dissonance context and something sweet to sound off of. And it's literally what the second line was based on. It's the missing link, after all. If we return it, it's beautiful, but not syrupy in the way that an overly consonant harmonization would be. The dissonance reveals this deep well of anguish that makes us feel profound rather than sweetsy. Okay, and if you'd like to experience the harmony in its final form, check out the finished song, Into the Void. Link in the description. All right, that's it for this time. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments. Subscribe so you catch my future videos. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm Sahar Galt. I'll see you next time.